Hello, today we are working on a Tandon TM100 2A 5.25 inch floppy drive. This is out of an IBM 5160 that you saw a sneak peek of in my last video. I've already done some basic work on this drive. I have cleaned the heads and I've hooked it up to a Pentium 2 computer with Windows 98 right now just to make some troubleshooting easier. The drive for the most part works. It will read, it will write, but it is very shaky. There's, it has a lot of read errors. If you format a disk, it'll show a lot of bad sectors. Now, to some extent, that's the bad disks I'm, or old disks that I'm using. But I also noticed through that troubleshooting process that this spindle is not running at the correct speed. So here's my test setup. You're looking at the bottom of the drive. This is the back of the drive. This is the underside right here. And the lighting here is kind of poor because I have this fluorescent desk light set up right here. And so that's making the lighting look kind of harsh. But this fluorescent desk light is actually our uh, source of light that we're going to use to look at the stroboscopic pattern on this spindle. So these black marks will appear to be standing still under fluorescent light with a magnetic ballast. They'll appear to be standing still once this drive is running. It's, it's not running at the moment. But I'm going to use a program called Image Disk to just turn the motor on and let it run. I have a, a disk in the drive. It's not a, disk, not a disk I care about. Disk is in the drive. Door is closed. And I'm going to load up Image Disk and run this motor. And I'll show you what I mean about the pattern standing still. There are two rings of marks. The inner ring is for 50 hertz lighting. The outer ring is for 60 hertz lighting. Here in North America, we have 60 hertz electric service. So we should see the outer 60 hertz ring appear to stand still. This video is just going to cover adjusting the speed of this drive. Uh, other maintenance is outside of the scope of this video. So I have image disk loaded, and when I press enter, it'll turn on the motor. I don't know how this is going to look on camera. Probably not very well, because we also have the speed of the camera shutter. But now you can see a little bit. If you look at this inner ring, you can see that it looks like it's turning slowly, even though the spindle is running at high speed. Except the inner ring is the 50 hertz ring we should see the outer ring standing still. Now there is a speed adjustment potentiometer right here. You're looking at the rear end of it. The adjustment end is actually on the bottom or the top of the drive, but we're looking at the bottom, so we have to go underneath with a little flathead adjustment tool. And this is a 10 turn potentiometer, so you can screw it in and screw it out 10 turns. It's not like a volume control that just has a a minimum and a maximum. You can go around and around and around ten times with this. And I have gone the entire length of the travel back and forth and found that it makes very little difference in the apparent speed. You can see up here in the top corner, right here. You can see me turning the potentiometer down here and the disc spinning up here. So right there, the 50 hertz ring is standing still. If I go the other direction, we can get the 50 hertz ring to move a little bit. That's not much difference. So that potentiometer is having very, very little effect. The next thing I want to do is measure the DC voltage going to the motor. Now again, I realize lighting is kind of poor here because I have this harsh backlight. But that's necessary to view the strobe pattern on the on the uh, spindle motor on the spindle so this is the motor and this is the belt and this is the part of the drive that actually moves the disc so I want to take a look at the DC voltage going to the motor and see what it is see if if this circuit is regulating the voltage at all and see if that voltage changes with load I'm going to put my finger on this spindle if the uh, servo control board is working properly, the voltage to the motor should go up if I increase the load on the motor. 
Okay, I have my voltmeter connected to the two power pins for the motor and I'm going to start image disk again to turn the motor on. The motor is spinning and take a look at the voltmeter. Right now it is measuring about 6.8 volts. Now that's right away that tells me that the regulator, regulator circuit on this servo board down here is working to some extent because this big transistor right here is what's controlling the voltage to the motor. There it is. This servo board is supplied with 12 volts. So if this transistor were shorted, we would see 12 volts right now on that voltmeter. But because we see 6.8, the transistor is not shorted. What I'm going to do though is use my finger and just drag this down a little bit and we'll watch the voltmeter. See the voltage going up. So the servo board is working to regulate the motor speed. Because as I apply pressure to the spindle, it's causing the motor to work harder and require more voltage to maintain the same speed. So the motor is sending feedback pulses to the servo board, and the servo board is responding by increasing the voltage. So that's a good sign. I think the next thing I'll do is test this potentiometer and to see if the pot itself is bad. We can take a closer look at this servo board as it's called. This is the potentiometer right here that I was adjusting. You can see the adjustment screw right there. That's the transistor that controls the voltage to the motor. And these pins I just unhooked. This set of pins here is power from the main board on the drive and this set of pins goes to the motor. Two of those pins supply power to the motor and the other two, the two up here on the very top, are the tachometer sensor inside the motor that provide feedback for the control circuitry on the servo board. So this potentiometer is a... I'm trying to see what its rating or its value is, 1K. So this is a 1 kilo ohm potentiometer. It's written right there. Of course, it's hard to see with the lighting I have. But we should be able to measure across the terminals on the back. So these, if you look at my index finger, fingernail, that's one side of the potentiometer. That's the other side, and that's the wiper in the middle. So we should have about 1,000 ohms between this terminal and this terminal. And the resistance between the wiper and either terminal should change as we adjust the position of the potentiometer. I'll measure that off camera and see what we find. Well, the potentiometer checks out fine. It's 1,000 ohms, or almost 1 kilo ohm between those two points. And if I measure between the wiper and either terminal, it, the resistance varies as I turn the screw. So the pot itself is fine. Let's look at the schematic. A member of the Vintage Computer Forum was kind enough to send me a schematic of how this drive operates. And I have, actually he sent me the whole service manual, but in the service manual is this schematic. And I have printed off the schematic just for the servo board. And I really is not all fitting here on screen, but I want you to be able to see some important parts. The potentiometer that we were looking at is this one right here. Now if we go up here, we have the 12 volt rail and we have ground. So voltage from the 12 volt rail comes through this 470 resistor, through this uh, 2.67K resistor, that's an odd value, but I'm not surprised. Through the potentiometer, through a 1.54K resistor, and then up to ground. So 12 volts through a 470, through a 2.67, through the potentiometer, through a 1.54 to ground. I want to measure the voltage on the wiper of the potentiometer, which is also pin 10 of 
the LM2917, which is, if you look at the board, this component right here. So I think we should hook this back up and measure between pin 10 and ground of this chip. The reason I want to measure that voltage is because the basic functionality of the speed control circuit is working because it's providing regulated power to the motor and it is responding to changes in, in motor load which tells me that the tachometer in the motor is sending pulses back into the control circuitry and the control circuitry is responding to those pulses and varying the voltage accordingly. So that basic system is working it's just that the potentiometer doesn't seem to have any effect on motor speed. I'll get my adjustment tool and we'll probe the wiper of this potentiometer which is most easily accessed via pin 10 on this chip right here. Now this voltage is present all the time as long as the drive has power. The motor does not have to be running for this voltage to be present. So I have my meter set up you can see in the upper right hand corner one terminal of the meter is grounded and the other terminal is right here which I'll attach to pin 10. So already we have 3.39 volts let's see if that changes as I adjust the potentiometer. And yes it does. So right now I am turning the potentiometer to the left like you were turning down a uh, volume control. Okay, I'm at the lower limit so I can go from 2.27 volts all the way up. Let's see how far I can go. So lower limit is 2.27, upper limit is 3.73. Just to double check, I'll turn the motor back on and make sure that voltage is still present even with the motor on. Okay, motor is running. Still there. So we are providing the proper offset voltage to the uh, to the LM2917 and yet it doesn't seem to be responding very much. I'll take a look at this schematic a little bit further but at this point I'm wondering if there's a problem with the LM2917. I'll take a look at the schematic again. So you see the dotted line. The dotted line is the LM2917. That's that 14 pin dip package that we that I was just probing. There's the potentiometer. There's pin 10. And you can see it goes into the inverting input of an op amp. It's possible that op amp is faulty, but boy, I find that hard to believe. I really find that hard to believe. I'll have to study this for a while and see what we find. Well, I have to say I'm stumped on this one. I I'm always hesitant to fault integrated circuits in a situation like this, but the next best thing I can think is that that LM2917 is faulty. They're readily available. Would not be too hard to remove that one and replace it. Maybe I'll try that next, because otherwise I'm not sure what to say. Any hints or suggestions, please leave them in the comments down below. I'll call this video Part 1. If I can figure it out, there will be a part two. If not, well, this is it. So any help is appreciated. Thanks.